Wait, don't call the pound. That's my dog. Okay guys, for tonight's Saturday Night Snack in a Movie, I am super excited because I am looking right now, and you're going to see behind me right now, the actual Winn-Dixie from the movie because of Winn-Dixie. Right around the corner from Napoleonville where the entire movie was filmed. Except for a couple of opening shots over in Gibson, like where she rides along the river, races the boat, and then goes over the bridge. In the movie, when she gets here to this Winn-Dixie, which is now a Rouse's, she rides down this lane right here, and the camera view stays right here as she rides towards the Winn-Dixie. It has taken me about 10 years to find this location. I have searched everywhere at every Winn-Dixie that I could find, and then I finally realized it wasn't even filmed in the area I was looking. It was filmed in Louisiana, but it takes place in Florida in a fictional town called Naomi. In the film, this was the Winn-Dixie, and then down here there was an Eckert Drugs. I think there was something else over here, but I honestly don't remember. I'm actually in town because I was going to film every single location where they filmed because of Winn-Dixie. However, once I got over there, the town was totally destroyed, so I decided not to do it. I wanted to so bad. But at least we get to see the cream of the crop right here, the actual Winn-Dixie. Most people from this area don't even know where Napoleonville is. And I was in this store last night, and I asked the cashier, do you have any idea, you know, that this is the Winn-Dixie from the movie? And she's like, what? So <laughs> it's really strange to me that people around here don't even realize that. But we're going to go in right now. We're going to take a little walk around the store, and uh, I'm going to show you where a couple of scenes were filmed in here. In the movie, Opal comes in the store to get macaroni and cheese, white rice, and tomatoes. She walks right along this way here, and then Winn-Dixie starts wreaking havoc. Right over here in the produce section is where Winn-Dixie would have knocked over the manager and Opal would have said, wait, don't call the pound, that's my dog. In the movie, Otis brings a giant jar of pickles to the party, but we don't need one that big. We're gonna get classic zesty dill spears. These look delicious, that'll be perfect. We also need some cream cheese for our snack. And we also need some ham. I think this'll do. I can now say I officially bought pickles from the because of Winn-Dixie. Okay guys, so before we get to our snack, let's talk a little bit about these uh, filming locations because when I was in the Winn-Dixie that you guys just saw, just for the heck of it, I stopped this lady that worked there and I asked her because I was curious if she had any idea, um, you know, about what was going on with that being a filming location. And she said yes, that the crew, the whole production was like stationed down in one of the other buildings, you know, what that's attached to the store. And she said that uh, they did film inside that store right there, but the exterior shots was actually at a different location. Now, I didn't know this. She told me that that location was called Butcher Boy, and it was over in Donaldsonville. I was in Plattenville, I believe it's called. So I did some research when I came out of the store, and she was right. We're going to get to that in a minute, but I want to take a few minutes to show you guys some of these filming locations and what I had to go through to actually find them, because there is no information online about them whatsoever. Okay, so to start this off, the movie is set in Naomi, Florida, which doesn't even exist. Naomi is a totally fictional town. I was looking in Florida at first when I was trying to find a filming location. Turns out it was filmed in Louisiana in a town called Napoleonville. I found that out because we were in Louisiana and I just happened to be looking for movies that were filmed in Louisiana. But there was no other information online whatsoever. No locations documented, no videos, no nothing. So I literally had to watch the movie several times and pull up Google Earth beside it and just start scouring the streets for these locations. 
There are a couple other areas, though. Like I showed you where the Winn-Dixie locations, one was in Donaldsonville, and the other was in Plattenville. The beginning of the movie actually starts in another town called Gibson. Okay, so at the beginning of the movie, Opal throws a baseball, runs after it, hears the church bell ring, jumps on her bike, and rides out this pathway in front of four big trees. I cannot find those trees. They could really be anywhere. There's sugarcane in the background. There's just a dirt road in front of them. I mean, really, I don't know how I would find those at all. I tried on Google Earth and it didn't happen. So let's move on to the next thing. She continues riding down that dirt road past an old, what looks like an abandoned house. Now looking on Google Earth, I have marked this area as Opal's Ride. If you're looking at the area in 2019, that's the latest picture they have, you can't see that house at all. You have to go back to 1989 to see the house right here. And it's very difficult to see. You can jump forward to 1998, it's still there. A little farther we get to 2004. And then when you get to 2005, it appears to be gone. This movie came out in 2005, so it would have been filmed right around that time for that house to exist. If we jump back forward to 2019, you can see in front of where the house would have been, right here, you can see this tree and then a big tree over here. If we look back at the footage on the video, you can see this crappy looking tree that's taller, some other small trees, and then a big tree here. So it totally matches up in that area right there, that triangle. As she continues to ride her bike, you can see she's now on a paved road. Behind her, you can see where the gravel road is. And if we look at Google Earth, you can see right here, here's the gravel road, here's where the house was and the trees we just talked about, here's where the gravel turns into that concrete road. She rides for a second, then she looks to the left and sees a boat in this river right here. And this is one thing I love about movies. Now let's look at this. This is where she's riding right now. She turns and looks at the boat. She's racing the boat. And then it's way up here where the filming stops as they get to this area right here. You can see this in the picture. The movie then jumps to the Picket Quick Food Mart, which is actually the church that Opal's dad is working at and the church that she is riding to. We'll come back to that in a minute because we're going to stick with this whole thing of her riding by the canal for a minute. Now keep in mind, this entire opening scene is supposed to be her riding from those trees right across town to the church, but this is where it gets fun. And this is one thing I love about movies. Now let's look at this. Immediately following that, she turns left and goes over a bridge which is all the way up here. This bridge right here, which as you can see in 2019, had completely collapsed and it was being fixed. If we go down to street view, you can see this bridge right here. This is where the bridge is uh, completely fallen apart. But if we move forward just a little bit, you can see the old bridge. Here's the steel that goes across the bridge. Here's the cross section, the right trees, and the right building behind it as well. So this is the bridge that she turns onto. And right here is where the Welcome to Naomi sign was. Okay, so back to Google Earth. Here is Opal's bridge right here. She comes down around the corner over the bridge a little bit farther here turns right on this street here. Let's go to street view so I can show you what this looks like and then I'm gonna show you in the movie. So take a look at this house here. You don't see that in the movie because the scene starts showing this gas station right here. Then it pans over this way as she rides her bike around the corner and you can see this edge of the house and this fence here. Okay, now here's another jump in the movie. We go from this place right here. We're going to exit Street View. This is where we're at right here in Gibson, Louisiana. That's where the bridge is and that thing I just showed you where she goes around the corner by the gas station. In the movie, remember, she's just going from those trees, riding across town, and showing up at the church. But in reality, the church is about 30 minutes away. I've saved that location, so watch this on Google Earth. This is how far 
the next scene is. All the way over here in Napoleonville, where she rides through a car wash, right here, down the street, through the car wash, and right over here where the church used to sit. Now the church itself was in an old convenience type store and it was kind of difficult to find and then I realized that when Opal comes in and sits down, you can see through the front doors across the street to Bergeron's Meat Market. So I wondered if it was real. I did a search and it's a real business in Napoleonville. I found that business and then I found the church. Now, unfortunately, that building has since been knocked down. I did drive through Napoleonville and I saw it. It's just a big grassy field now. After the church scene, we get to see where Opal lives. Friendly Corners Mobile Home Park. She rides her bike past the sign and into the park. It took me forever to find it because it does not exist. The only clues I had was there was an abandoned store on one side, a shell station on the other, and these big gas cylinders beside that. I pulled up every mobile home and trailer park I could find in the whole area and the surrounding area. Did not find it, so I went back to Google Earth and just started searching the town. In the back corner of the town, I finally found it. I found the abandoned store, the gas station with the cylinders, and the gravel drive along with the fire hydrant. This is where the mobile home park was. There was only four mobile homes in there, and looking back on Google Earth with the time feature, it looks like this was most likely just a set built for the movie. Because the only time you see those four trailers is when I get back to 2003 when the movie was filmed, and they're gone in 2004. Okay, so by the timeline in the movie, the next thing she does is go to the Winn-Dixie. We talked about those Winn-Dixie stores in the beginning of the video. One of them was in Donaldsonville that was used for the exterior shots and some of the interior. I could tell that by the way the front door was made. And other interior shots at the one in Plattenville. I believe those shots were the ones that were done in the proto section when uh, Winn-Dixie knocks over all the stuff, including the manager. Wait! Don't call the cab! So the next location is downtown. There's a couple things that happen down there. In the first scene, Opal and her dad are putting up lost dog signs, and Otis comes walking by and bumps into him. Otis is played by Dave Matthews, and he gets arrested just down the street from them. In that same location, just a little bit later, Opal comes riding her bike down the street, around the corner cafe, and down the other street to the pet store. Later in the movie, you see the Litmus Lozenge Company in this same location when they're searching for Winn-Dixie in the rain. Now, the particular thing about the Corner Cafe is that it's actually called the Cajun Corner Cafe. But remember, this is supposed to be in Florida. So they replicated the sign and just made it say Corner Cafe. All of this stuff is located right in the middle of town as you pull into Napoleonville. The Corner Cafe was the very first thing when I saw there. Now, let me show you on Google Earth how close this stuff is. So this whole location is located on this one block here. Right here is actually the Cajun Corner Cafe. Right here is the Litmus Lozenge Company. And then right down the street over here is Gertrude's Pet Store. If we go to Street View, you can see how these things look today, or at least how they did a year ago. So here is the, corn, the Corner Cafe, which on here you can sort of tell it's kind of blurry, but it says the Cajun Corner Cafe. They put up their signs right over here and bump into Otis. Otis gets arrested back here. Opal comes riding around the corner here. This is the Litmus Lozenge building right here where you see the neon lights. Then as we come down the street here, this is Gertrude's Pet Shop. In this picture, it's called The Corner. It was a bar. It is now abandoned. You can see the corner cafe down here with these six windows. That also appears to be closed, as well as almost everything in this town. Okay, so there are only two more main locations and a few small ones. We're going to go over here quick. And basically, you see the same places over and over throughout the movie. So the next one we're going to talk about is the library. 
When you first see the library, Opal comes riding her bike around the corner and up to the front of the library. Now this was so difficult for me to find, I went through Google Earth, through every street in the town, so I thought, and I did not find it until I personally pulled into Napoleonville and drove around the streets myself. At which time it popped out like a sore thumb. So I have no idea how I missed it when I was searching the streets on Google Earth. Once I got home and knew the name of the street, it really wasn't too hard to find and it actually still looks pretty good today. Here's where Opal rode around the corner and right up in front of the library. Now once I start a project I get pretty obsessed so I wanted to find even the smallest locations. In the next scene Opal takes Win dixie to church, he sees a mouse and he goes absolutely ballistic. After he catches the mouse and gives him to the preacher, he and Opal take the mouse and release it. Let us pray for this mouse. This was kind of a tough one to find but I saw a playground in the back and I used that to find it on Google Earth. It was definitely changed from how it looks in the movie, but it was the same area. Another location I found was this one over here, where there is an abandoned building here, an abandoned building here with a long fence, and a big open field here. In one, the kids come riding their bikes around the abandoned building. In another, they're all playing baseball in the field. And in a couple of random shots, there's things happening in front of this fence, like Opal taking down one of the lost dog signs, and her dad calling for Win dixie when they're searching for him in the rain. Win dixie Dixie! If we pull it up on Street View, you can see exactly what I mean here, that these are the actual locations. This is the abandoned building. They come riding their bikes around this corner. This is the area where they're playing baseball. And then here is the, uh, the other abandoned building with the fence over here and the post where she takes down the, uh, the lost dog sign. So the final main filming location and the one that completely eluded me was Gloria Dump's house. I couldn't find it. I have absolutely no idea what house they used what location it's in. It could be anywhere between the three towns that they used to film this movie. But I did find the location where they're riding their bikes to her house. They come around a corner with a yellow house, ride their bikes down the street, and then when Dixie runs off into this uh, dead end into a bunch of sugar cane, and uh, the Dewberry boys tell Opal that the witch lives back there which is uh, Gloria Dump. She follows the trail back there and she finds Gloria Dump's house. Now in reality, that house does not exist back there. So like I said, I have no clue uh, where that house is, what house they used, um, but that's the only thing I didn't get. That and those trees at the beginning of the movie and throughout the movie, you see Opal sitting by those trees several times. Okay guys, so I hope you enjoyed that. That took me about a week to put together to find all those locations. I'm really disappointed that I didn't actually get to get out and film them in person for you, but the best I could do was show you on Google Earth. The town was just not the kind of place that would be receptive to that kind of thing. Me being out there filming, you know, streets and mm -hmm. buildings and houses and things like that. Yeah, so that was the best that I could do for you right there, just to show you what I found on Google Earth. So anyways, let's get down to the snack here. It's going to be a really simple one this week. Um, in the movie, if you have seen Because of Wind dixie you know that Otis shows up at the party with a gigantic jar of pickles. So I was trying to think of something we could make with pickles this week, and we're going to make low-carb pickle wraps. What do we have to do that with, babe? Ham, smoked ham, deli fresh, Vlasic crunchy pickles, and Philadelphia cream cheese. Pretty simple. simple. Okay, so basically what we're going to do here, we're going to take slices of the ham, we're going to dry them on paper towel so that the cream cheese will actually be spreadable on the ham instead of wet and slippery. Then we're going to roll these pickles inside the ham that is slathered with the Philadelphia cream cheese. So our cream cheese we forgot to leave out to get soft. So what we did was we, we just opened the box, left it in this little uh, silver thing, and dunked it in some hot water for a few minutes. 
and that softens the cream cheese so that we can spread it on the ham now. And that we're going to let the lady love do. <laughs> Hopefully this will work. Put it on there real thick if you can even get it on. Yeah, it looks like you just had to mess with it a little bit. Because the ham is still kind of wet, so it makes it hard to actually spread the cream cheese. So here's the other part, guys. The ham that we got is just these small little circles. So we're spreading on one and then overlaying the next piece and spreading on that too. So we have more to wrap around the pickle. And the pickle will stick to the cream cheese. And now we just wrap a pickle in each of these. Think we need to dry the pickles off at all? I think we do, just a little. Maybe just a little bit, yeah. Roll oh, that beautiful man footage. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so here they are. Our cream cheese, pickle, ham, wrap. Roll-ups. Because of Winn-Dixie roll-ups. There you go. So we're going to do a taste test right now. Mm. Mm -hmm. mm. You gotta love pickles already anyway. Of course, you also gotta love cream cheese and ham. Mm. I think we could put a little more cream cheese on. I think we could put a lot more cream cheese on. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but it's tough to spread it on the ham. So this ham was tearing. And, uh, you know, really, they didn't have a deli at the Rouse's or Winn-Dixie, whatever you want to call it. So I had to get whatever was on the shelf, and this stuff is really, really thin. Um, you want to get thicker ham to be able to spread the stuff on there. I think really that you need to get some ham from the deli and have right. them slice it, just like the square ham. Yeah, because they can, they can slice it thick, mm -hmm. like thicker. you actually need it. So, yeah. All right, guys, stay tuned um, every Saturday for more Saturday Night Snack and the Movies. And, uh, yeah, enjoy your pickles. We out. Mm, bye bye. <laughs>